Now, I don't know which is the best way to go here. Should I put it on here and then put this on? Or should I put it on here and then put it on? I think maybe I'll just try and very gently just put a little around the edge here. I don't want to be putting on so much that it's going to run down. Oh, maybe that was too much. It won't take very much. Okay, I see if we can get this right the first time. Okay, that's it. And it's set up already. Doesn't take long. And it doesn't appear to be running down. Let's turn it around and look at the other side. Nope, looking good. That completes step 32. Thirty-three, and there's photo etch, so we get to try out that new uh, primer. Some of these pieces we've already got made up, like the observation set number three. We need four of them. We've got four, but the L twenty fours. There's only one. So I'm hoping there's more of these on the L sprue. There were eight of these. This is the eighth one. And I don't know why I didn't cut it off and paint it at the same time, but it's still on the sprue. It's a good thing because we need it now. And do you remember, uh, oh, a few episodes ago, I was talking about the next time I had a part like this and the peg was attached to the sprue like it is right here. I was just going to cut cut the sprue off and not remove it at the peg and that way I'd have something to hold on to while I painted this. Well I think now's the time to do that. And not only that, I uh, kind of hate to crank up the airbrush just for this one piece. So I'm going to see if I just can't maybe just use an ordinary brush just to paint this one little piece here and see how it comes out. I'll, I'll cut it off right here, then I'll trim off this little part here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Now the idea is to remove this piece of sprue as close as possible to the part because something this small is very hard to file. It's hard to hold on to. I think I'm probably better off leaving well enough alone because I don't want to accidentally take this detail off here. Yeah, I think once it's painted it's this, this piece right here, it will show, but you know, you're going to have to be really close to see it. Now, here is where I don't mind if the alligator clip marks the plastic, because the part that's going to get marked is the part that's going to get thrown away. shaking this up. It looks like I'm kind of flooding it on there, doesn't it? Okay, now can we turn this uh, 180 degrees? trying not to put it on too thick, but oh my, it's uh, 
forming a skin and coming off there. Maybe I'll have to saturate it and then remove. I think this is going to be okay. Okay, quit poking at it now. Yeah, I think we got it. Okay, this is the L24 that we just painted. I might have to enlarge that hole a little bit. Try it one more time here. Yeah. I don't know if that enlarged it or not. Let's give it a try. No. Better go a couple of sizes bigger. Well, one size bigger. Okay, that's going to work. Might have worked before too if I had to, you know, put the extra thin on that hole, and then, uh, you know, just let it uh, let the plastic weld itself all together. If you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll do that on the other one. Now this thing has a little bump on one side and that little bump is supposed to go to the back. You probably see it there. Probably to represent some sort of a control. Now I, I'm going to try and just push it down just a little here. It's a little more, it'll seat itself just a little better. As I keep saying, it'll plastic will sort of weld itself together there. Okay, that should be all right. It's in a position where I'm probably not going to bump it. Now the other hole right here, that takes a piece that's a little bigger. Okay, once again, I'm just going to do a dry run here. Oh yeah, that's going to go good. Where's my extra thin? Now that little piece of plastic that came out from when I did the drilling that stuck on the side there, well, I saw it too while I was doing my editing just now. Stopped what I was doing, went and brushed it out. It's gone. Okay. Okay, I've turned this section around now and you are now facing the stern. You know, I may not need any more. Yeah, I think that'll be okay once it sets. Now the other side here, 
is a mirror image to this. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Now the only other plastic pieces we need for step 33 here is F20. And I'm going to nip it close because I'll be trimming it off. And F22. Now 22 maybe I'll try to paint it by holding on to the sprue. Now this little piece here is textured on one side to represent I guess decking and it is not on the other. So I gotta get it in the right way up. And it's supposed to go right in this slot right here. And I think what I'll do is I'll, obviously I'm going to paint it after. Just paint it the same color as this. It won't be, it won't be dark like all the other small pieces. Being as it's part of the, well on the other hand it's, it is a type of decking isn't it? Maybe it could be the dark. Okay, now this part here, I hate it when they fasten the uh, sprue onto the side of a small piece like this. I think I actually did pretty good this time. What I am doing here is a variation on something I read that one of the viewers said. And he said that what he does is he will take his little part and he will glue it, uh, the peg down onto, onto something. And I thought he said some kind of foam, styrofoam or something. Anyway, maybe I got that wrong. Anyway, the idea is you glue the peg to something and then you, you can paint the part. Um, however, I'm just sort of... Uh, using blue tack here as a substitute I think it's probably going to be plenty strong enough to you know keep this little part from you know swaying back and forth when I you know brush it well we'll soon know Okay, here's hoping when that dries, it's going to shrink, and I'm not going to lose the detail of this part that's at the top here. Several hours now has passed since we painted this, and I would think it's probably as dry as it's going to get. And speaking of passing of time, can, can you remember what you were doing half a year ago today? Um, well, it's, it's kind of easy for me to find out what I was doing, say, half a year ago, because all my files, my video files and photo files, the metadata records the date, and I have the time set accurately in my camera so that, you know, the, uh, you know, if it says a particular time of a particular date, I can be pretty sure it's going to be within an hour of that, because I generally forget to change my camera for daylight savings time. So the worst it's going to be out is an hour. But at least the date is going to be right. And uh, what were we doing? Whoops, I dropped it. What were we doing six months ago today? Well, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of, uh, you know, pertinent to this particular episode. Well, this is what we were doing 
six months ago today. Well, folks, you're seeing it as it happens. I wasn't actually expecting it to be here until this afternoon. So as you can see, I didn't prepare my model table. Ah, oh, yes, and who can forget the four clocks that were chiming every 15 minutes? <laughs> well, I've just got the one chiming now. Let me get my coat off. Oh, by the way, I did take some pictures uh, inside the model store, and we'll uh, go through those first, maybe. After all, we waited a month for this. We can wait another few minutes. Oh, yes, and then we did that tour of the model store. Yeah, well, that would have been interesting to people who don't live in Canada. And you probably thought, it looks just like a model store where I live. Yeah. In some ways, it seems like it was yesterday. And in some ways, it seems like it never happened. What do you think we're going to be doing six months from today, all being well? Well, I'm going to predict we will be almost finished. I think that unless the railings and the rigging and stuff like that, uh, which is going to be very finicky, um, you know, and there's no instructions for that, uh, well, that might take a little extra time. But I think in six months from today, we should be finished. This must be a real hideous sight. But it's just part of the deal. I'm trying to get the blue tack off of the peg part of this. I wasn't uh, anticipating that blue tack sticking on there like that. I thought it would completely let go, but it, as you noticed, it didn't. I think I got it down pretty good here. Well, we'll give this a try and see what happens. If the blue tack is stuck on the end, then the solvent isn't going to get on the plastic. I'm noticing when I was rolling that around on my fingers there that I kind of rubbed the paint off a little bit. It's supposed to go right there like that. Normally I don't use metal tweezers for something like this, but I was finding this thing was sticking to the rubber tipped ones. So I can let go of it now without it falling over. Whoops! Oh, straighten her up here. I'll try this again. Don't want to wait too long or it's going to evaporate here. Okay, let's see what happens there. wonder how many times I'm going to break that off. Alright, now let's not be breaking it off unnecessarily. Alright, we've got a bunch of photo etch to find. I was going to start looking for the pieces of photo etch that we need. Uh, but then I was noticing that we still haven't painted this little piece that we glued on here. And I want it to be the same as this down here. I do believe that possibly somebody would have stood on this. It could be that something that I'm going to have to put a railing on later. I'll have to see what it looks like and what is going to fasten in here. I imagine that um, what is going to go in here will probably go right there as well. It'll just be some sort of a mast. Again, I don't want to be putting it on too thick, and I want to try to not touch the light gray. I think I'm going to, have to put it on two coats.
Okay, now here's hoping that when that dries, all those little holes that I have just filled up are going to still be visible. I don't know what it's called when paint shrinks like that. Uh, almost like shrink wrap. Uh, it's probably a word for it. Okay, now is there anywhere on these things here that I need to touch up? I still don't know for sure what these are. Somebody was thinking they might be some sort of an antenna and I tend to, tended to agree because being as that they're at angles it might be some sort of uh, primitive rangefinder type thing that was you know back in the 30s. Anyway we need another ladder B2 and I was right about these little things up here. We need more of those little round discs that have, that have to go on. So we need D6s and a D11. Another D11. Actually, it's not a whole lot. I thought there was more. Okay, I have sharpened my special cutter here. holding this with my left hand and I'm kind of right-handed There we go. Okay, we actually need three of these. And I'm going to get the other two exactly the same way. Okay, now D11s. Now it seems to me the last time we did one of these, I got too close to the part and I actually took a little bit off. Let's try not to do that this time. I realize I probably blocked your vision there, but that's all right. You knew what happened. Okay, we need two of these, so I'll get the other one the same way. Okay, I think I've alluded to this before, but I'm going to mention it again. You'll notice uh, where it's supposed to bend there. The metal is actually thinner there. It might only be as half as thick for all I, for all I know, it's, but it's very noticeably thinner. And if I was to have this piece, say, too far in, like that, yes, it would bend at where it's supposed to bend, but then this piece here would come up against here, and it would be pulling away instead of bending. And uh, you would end up tearing it, if you know what I mean. So I think it's rather important that a person has it. I'm just going to tighten it down there so that it will bend uh, all the way up without really touching. Let's, see, let's let me go in here now. So it should bend up. Pull this back so you can see. All right. 
Now this part here should not really be touching right here or just barely because if it's binding it's going to rip on you where it's not supposed to. Sorry Andy, I'm scratching up your nice little device here. Okay, I think that's pretty close. Oops, I always got a poke. Give it one more poke and straighten it here. Okay, let me check the monitor and make sure that they're still in the field of view. Oh yeah, it looks good. Okay, clamp it down. Take the razor blade. Get it underneath. Whoops, I moved it. You definitely do not want to be a bull in a china shop when you're doing this. Okay, there. I'm going to do the other one the same way. We have had a power failure. Power's been out for about 15 minutes already. I don't know when it's going to go back on. But all of a sudden I was editing out here and uh, my battery backup kicked in. I don't know if you can see it. It gives me about 15 minutes or so to close everything down before the battery runs out. So I was able to save everything. And I'm up to probably about uh, 22, 23 minutes maybe into the video. We'll see what happens. If the power doesn't go on, we're going to be late again. Just have to wait and see. I am very happy to be able to tell you that this rare occurrence here in Winnipeg only lasted for about an hour. So I think the video should be on time today. Let's continue on. Okay, here we go again. I've already mounted in, in the right place to save time but you can just barely see the ends of the uh, stair treads and, and this part here is the stringer and it's supposed to bend right right there well you, you can it's pretty obvious you can see that now if I have it too far in the stringer is going to come up against this part right here and it's going to want to tear away from the treads so we're just going to try and get our or, uh, I can't talk and work at the same time, right? There we go. Get it in and under there all the way. Okay, now we're just going to lift it up. Okay. Now there was, n there was no tearing action because this piece here the rail and the and the and the stringer were far enough away from where it's supposed to bend. Okay, now let's move it out. Okay, now here again I'm gonna have the stringer just visible. Now I realize I'm not gonna be able to go all the way up because the railing is going to hit the side of the photo etch machine. We'll eventually get this. Yeah, I think that's pretty close. Yeah, I can see, I can see the stringer. Okay. Now we're going to go up. And we'll stop when the railing gets, gets to here because we don't want to bend the railing back out. And then I can just do the rest with my fingers later. Now you're going to notice here that there's going to be very little bending with my fingers because uh, it pretty near went at to right angles. So, okay, let's get on with this. 
I don't know if you're watching the little red dot move across the bottom of your screen or not, but if you are, you'll notice that this video is already just over 30 minutes long. Wow, what's happened here? Anyway, we're not going to have enough time to try out our new primer today. That's going to have to wait for tomorrow's episode. So, thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. And maybe we won't have any power failures.